Ubuntu used to be a leader among Linux distributions for desktops. In the popularity rating on DistroWatch, it dropped to the fourth place. Currently, number one is MX Linux distribution. This video might reveal one of the reasons why. Let's compare their resource consumption. I'm going to measure it. I have the latest MX Linux version 19.2 here. I don't want to use any fancy tools. Let's run something dead simple. How about top? It's pre-installed on most of the Linux distros. I want to emphasize that there is no additional apps running in the background. The system has just started. The first thing that I would like you guys to take a look at is memory. MX Linux is loaded using only 442 megabytes. That's a good result. Now let's check CPU usage. We're going to be looking at this column. It is sorted by CPU consumption and shows what percent of a single CPU core is being used by every running process. For example, 100% means that one whole core is being busy. 150, one core and a half of the second core and so on. Because the column is sorted automatically, the top numbers are what we want. But we obviously need to run something to make the processor work. This is the tricky part. How can we quickly estimate the desktop CPU consumption excluding the opened application itself? I think I came up with an interesting solution. Let's open some app, for example, the file manager. Now what I'm going to do is grab the window with my left mouse button and start moving it around. While I'm doing that, let's take a look at the CPU column. We have two processes taking the most, around 29% and 10%. If we sum those up, it will be around 40%. Let's write down those numbers that we got. I can close the file manager and open another app to prove that the CPU numbers are not application related. Let's open, I don't know, transmission. Yep, the numbers appear to be similar. Okay, it's time for Ubuntu. I have the latest LTS version 2004 here. Let's open the terminal and run top. Okay, we got the first interesting result. 800 megabytes. Ubuntu occupies almost twice as much as MX Linux. You guys remember the meme with the fat penguin that I created? Check out my Twitter if you don't. I'm going to measure CPU consumption the same way I did in MX Linux. Whoa, look at that. It eats more than one whole core. Are you kidding me? That's what, 300% more than MX Linux? Unbelievable. I'm not playing a 3D game. I'm not watching a movie in 4K. All I'm doing is just moving around this small window. But it seems that this simple task is very challenging for Ubuntu. This selfish behavior reminds me of the Microsoft's approach to consuming users' resources. Why could that be? Imagine if I had an additional CPU consuming task going in parallel. Would that cause some lagging, especially on slow computers? Okay, let's put the numbers from both distros together. The difference is remarkable. Looking at this table, I recall performance tests from the past that compared Intel and AMD processors. Some people were ready to spend additional money to chase even 15% performance boost. Well, here we have way more than that, and you don't even have to spend money. No wonder MX Linux is number one. Considering how oversimplified Ubuntu's desktop is, you would expect exceptionally good performance numbers, but nope, clearly it's not the case. Some of you guys might say that this comparison is not fair because those distros have different desktop environments, but I don't agree with that. I'm not comparing desktop environments, I'm comparing distributions. No one forced Canonical, which is the company behind Ubuntu, to choose GNOME as their default desktop environment. There are many awesome environments for Linux, they could choose any of them, just like MX Linux team did. And yes, I'm very well aware that there is Xubuntu and other flavors, but the problem is that most of the beginners who are migrating from Windows heard only about Ubuntu 
will download it and judge the performance of the whole Linux universe by what they experience with GNOME. Add to that GNOME's peculiar interface, which is very different from what Windows users are used to see on their screens. Can that slow down the mass migration to Linux? What do you guys think? Let's discuss bloatware in the comments. Be the true owner of your computer. Don't let other people or companies control your machine. See you later.